And welcome back to Exclusiva. I'm David Puente in New York. El Día del Padre. Father's Day is this weekend. Joining us to celebrate fatherhood is a man who not only is a father in real life, he also plays one on TV. Veteran actor Tony Plana has starred in more than 60 films, TV shows, and on Broadway. Today on ABC's Ugly Betty, Tony is Betty's father, Ignacio Suarez. Mr. Plana, welcome to Exclusiva. Your history as an actor is quite amazing. You trained in London at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, a long way from Cuba, where you were born. Tell us about coming to America as a child and this incredible face-to-face -face confrontation that your father had with none other than Che Guevara in order to leave Cuba. Well, my father at the time, this was 1959, uh, when the revolution took place, worked with the National Bank of Cuba. And as you know, Che Guevara took over the bank. He became known as um, quite a, a bloody executive, literally. He executed a lot of people. Mm. My father was very concerned about his own safety and also ours. So we um, exiled, um, you know, on a pretext of vacation. We left primarily because there was no religious freedom in Cuba. And your father uh, had to present that resignation directly to Che Guevara. What was that That's like right. for him? And, and, well, it was a frightening experience because he had, he had, you know, he knew other colleagues of his that were imprisoned and or had been executed. He was saved by the fact that he had a background of social work with the Catholic Church and the Catholic youth movement who were promoting social, uh, economic, and political uh, justice in, in Cuba. And Che recognized that and let him go. Hmm. Uh, other, other people were not so fortunate. Tony, it's a, it's a memorable story on this Father's Day weekend as, as we talk about fathers. Let's talk about your current hit on TV, Ugly Betty. What has made Ugly Betty so successful, Tony? The big lesson about Ugly Betty is um, creating a character that has had such universal appeal. This fish out of water is, a, is, a, is a, an aspect of the character that connects with everybody. The underdog trying to navigate her way in a very hostile and very uh, competitive world that is not very receptive to the kind of person that she is. But most of all, I think it's the inclusive nature of, of Betty has um, allowed this show to connect with everyone. 80% of our viewers are non-ethnic, 11% are African-American, 9% are Latino. So this is, this is the first Latino-based show in history that has had this kind of crossover success. Ugly Betty has set the standard for that kind of inclusive fusion type of approach to programming on television. You know how it is, it's, it's, it's difficult to succeed in this business and it's, and it's uh, particularly difficult if you are a minority and have a minority voice and a minority perspective. Tony Plana, thank you for all your work. And felicidades, uh, ugly Betty's dad and a, a real dad in real life. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for joining us on Exclusive. Thank you. Thanks for your, thanks for your interest and for your uh, you know, concern. Appreciate it. All right, and that is Exclusiva. Thank you for watching. Actor Tony Planta discovered his passion for theater as a young boy in Cuba. Today, he stars in ABC's hit Ugly Betty, and I on LA has discovered that he also devotes his time to a very unique theater program for children. Theater is where the actors hone their craft. It's a live medium. You gotta be completely focused on getting it right the first time. That's exciting to me. Actor Tony Plana's love for theater spills over from his professional life to his personal life. It's what prompted him to create East LA Classic Theater 15 years ago, a program giving kids who are rarely exposed to this art form the opportunity to experience Shakespeare on stage while at the same time improving their literacy. They can appreciate the themes in the plays so they can find the joys of dramatic literature, but also the meanings inside it and apply them to their own lives. It's Shakespeare with a twist, as Tony incorporates a piece of modern history in each production. 
In this rendition of Romeo and Juliet, the tension of the L.A. Zoot Suit riots of the 1940s serves as the backdrop for this classic love story. Watch estos trampos! These kids get to come to the theater, enjoy it, be introduced to it in a fun, engaging way. Tony discovered his own passion for performing early on in life. As a boy growing up in Havana, Cuba, before moving to the U.S. at eight years old, he was already taking the stage. I was selected to recite a poem for the high school graduation, and I was only a second grader. Reciting that poetry in front of 2,000 people just always stayed with me. The power of it, the intensity, the joy of communicating to a live audience and getting that immediate feedback. After college, he went on a train at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London, where he continued to hone his craft. It's an interesting thing, you know, of, of studying classical theater and studying the great roles like Hamlet or Iago. Coming back to L.A. and trying to work on television, you know, and, and realizing that they're, they really only want to see you for gang member number two. That's where the seed was planted to start East L.A. Classic Theater and to create opportunities in the classics for actors of color performing for minority audiences. So when he landed his current role of Ignacio on the wildly popular ABC hit Ugly Betty, Tony felt vindicated. Hey, amor, you are so beautiful. Dad, stop. I play her father, and to me, Betty has opened up this possibility of fully dimensional Latinos existing on television, at least on, on a major network, in a show that's very inclusive. It's a validation for me. He brings that same inclusiveness to East L.A. Classic Theater, which provides kids with a hands-on, interactive experience. At the most basic, I want them to be introduced to theater and to enjoy it, so that later on when they grow up, they will seek out the theater as a way to enjoy literature and also just a way to find meaning for their lives. For a schedule of upcoming performances at the East L.A. Classic Theater, just log on to abc7.com. Two o'clock, moving in, Del Acero. Radar's up, scoping the target area. <laughs> Uh-oh, zero in. Slick it back, there it goes. <laughs> Who will be the lucky deb? Is it the blonde? Is it the brunette? <laughs> Score! He's got it. <laughs> Bienvenidos, carnales. Welcome to La Isla de los Alcatraces. The island of pelicans. Mi nombre es Juan Ruiz Escarzaga, and my first summertime job was walking a super maximum tier 30 years ago. I walked it for over 15 years, been spit on, stabbed, burned, and I'm still standing. You think you're hard. I'm harder. I work very hard to try and think of our students here at John Quincy Adams as my clients. Larry, we can't have another lawsuit like we had on that Blackwell case. That one cost the district a quarter of a million dollars. So I need you to be straight with me, Mr. Garfield. Unless we have reasonable cause to show Cesar or Mr. Littleton took your watch, I can't authorize a locker search. Did you cry when he died? Yes, sir. Why? I... I don't know. He made me see the stars. You see un hombre pobre, sucio, poor, dirty man. Pero soy más. I am much more. I am descendant of Jesus Malverde. You cannot touch me. No me puedes tocar. Forgive me, el guapo. I know that I, jefe, do not have your superior intellect and education. But could it be that once again, you are angry at something else and are looking to take it out on me? Mickey, you look like you want to say something. Yes, Mr. President, I, I think you should wait. For what? To see how negotiations continue with Guerra. Guerra wants Aguilar out of a Colombian prison. Are there any other circumstances under which he's going to give these hostages back? Possibly. 
crap. We know if we keep talking, we're not running the risk of these hostages getting shot during the rescue. What difference does it make if they're shot during a rescue or at Frente Command of Villa Sereno? I believe we can keep them alive longer if we let them be taken to Villa Sereno. It's amazing. No one is afraid. Oh, yeah? Should we be? <laughs> you don't take any of this seriously, do you? <laughs> no, I know, I know. It's, it's like pesos to you. Or any foreign currency. If it's not an American dollar, it's worth nothing. Say, Tommy, right? you are a communist. Are you not? Uh, no, Mr. Bringier, uh, I am not a, a, a communist. I'm Marxist-Leninist. You are not a communist, but you are a Marxist-Leninist. What is the difference? I didn't raise my daughter to be a puta. Are you calling me a whore? You're acting like one running off to some 30-year-old man's house. How much older are you than Cynthia? You leave her out of this. Why, Dad? If I'm a whore, huh, maybe she's a whore, too. Don't you ever say that. Is she a whore? Don't you ever say that! Well, just cut the shit and get me out of here. Oh, just cut the shit and get you out of here. Think I can just snap my fingers and the doors fly open? Well, can't you? Yeah. Hmm. Get me out of here and I'll do whatever you want. Anything that I want. <laughs> Anything that I want. Pick up the document and sign it. No! Let her go! Leave her alone! Come on, leave her alone! Kill her! All right, all right, I'll sign it! Pick up the document. Pick it up! I always hoped your mother would look my way. One night, uh, she did. Then after that, we fell in love. Dad, if this is too hard for you. I owe this to both of you. I could only sit back so long and let him treat her the way he did. I remember hearing her screaming, her crying when he hit her. And finally one night, I couldn't take it anymore. <sighs> Next thing I know, He'd pulled the knife. So I... I hit him. Just kept... hitting him. After that, we ran. And I never looked back. Because I vowed I'd never take my eyes off your mother again. I killed Ramiro Vasquez. <laughs>